noisy pants. Uh, garbage truck. Huh. Garbage truck. Those that's not finished yet. It will probably get finished today. Hello. Hello. <coughs> All right. Let's get coffee. Let's get dangerous. Darkwing Duck. Let's get dangerous. When there's trouble, you call DW. Darkwing Duck. Yeah, they should. Great stuff. We had all the best <coughs> cartoons when we were kids. Good. Kids today don't nice even know what's up. I seriously love that octopus mug. This is from, you could get one, Rosie. You live really close to the aquarium. You could get one. Can you get me the, uh... Oh, yeah. I've been wandering around singing When She Loved Me. That's so sad. Why are you singing sad songs? What song? When She Loved Me. Why well, it doesn't really go like that. <laughs> well, that's not good, judgy. What'd you say? So that's not good, all judgy. I wasn't judgy. It is a good song, but it's so sad. She loved me, she loved me not. No, that's not it either. <laughs> what? <laughs> when somebody loved me. Everything was beautiful. Every hour we spent together lived within my heart. And when she was sad, I was there to cry tears. And when she was happy, so was I. When she Jesse, the doll that the little girl gives away. So sad. I don't remember. Oh, um, it's sung by, um, I think it was uh, Sarah McLaughlin, actually, originally. You know. Little Fair Fame. Yeah. Through the summer and the fall, we had each other that was all. Just she and I together, like it was meant to be. Can you put your hands in broken Sure. But wait, you want it to be cinnamon flavored? Oh, no, I forgot it's cinnamon flavored. Yeah, cinnamon toast crunch. But if you're going to just put cherries in, it'll be good. We can do that. You want to do it. What do you have in there so far? Banana and yogurt. Oh. Yeah, if you just do cherries... And cinnamon toast crunch should be good. Avocado. Yeah, yeah, that'll it'll cover that flavor. Yeah, that'll just make it. That's more texture. Could be good, right? Could be great. Cherries go good with cinnamon stuff. I think so. I know so. Yeah, that's good. 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 Yeah, that's There's a text message thread between my sister, my mom, and I. And in it, this morning, my sister said to us, as November approaches, what are we doing for Thanksgiving slash Christmas? A totally normal question, right? Yeah. My mom just responded to her, I'll be home November 4th for Veterans Day. <laughs> what? She responded. That's good. So I guess everything else is off the table. What, what does that even mean? And also, why is it relevant? 
I don't understand. So please tell me you responded back with it. It just happened while I've been on live. Right, I've been so, watching the comments uh, go through. Respond back with a people flag <laughs> and, uh, I, and I, a guy saluting over and over and over again. I'm just, I'm just or confused. Not. I'm just confused. I'm confused by the inability to follow the storyline. Like, we're here to discuss Christmas and Thanksgiving, and you want... Oh, I put way too much. That was really bad. Okay. Well, milk. It's gonna be very milky today. Maybe it needs an extra shot. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> My dad finally decided he wants me to come get him. When? When? Yeah, in a group tech, the first week of November, which I pointed out was next week. Yikes. Yikes. Parents are wild. Boomers are crazy. Cindy's dad needs to be, like, picked up from something in another state and like many states away she lives in texas and he lives in new york and she's been waiting for him to be like yes i'm ready come get me or whatever what? for literally a month and he finally was just like yeah come the first week of november today and she was like okay wait <laughs> it's gonna take a little more planning than that how do you get somebody if you're in texas and there well she's gonna go fly to get him from new york Why city he fly? well he's older how old are you talking i don't know how old is your dad to fly on his own I don't understand. Don't look at me like... <laughs> what is... No, they're driving. Oh, they have to drive all his stuff, I bet. Oh. Too old. Don't be mean. <laughs> I put way too much milk. Yeah. So this is what we're going to do. Oh my gosh, now my mom is texting other things that are absolutely not true. What's she talking about? She's like, Ben David is coming in December, so we should do something then. Ben David is not coming in December. No. Isn't he coming? The end of November. The end of November, yeah. Yeah. Does she know that? I mean, I assume. <laughs> Maybe in our court. He's not a good communicator. He's really not a good communicator, it's true. You're right. You are right. My brother is not a great communicator. It's a 24-hour drive if you drive straight through, which we do. Whoa, that's wild. Ooh, that's dangerous. Be careful. This is too much milk, so I'm going to add a shot. Never drive defensively. Not a great communicator and not a good homemaker. Come on now. It's You're true. I mean, he's a mediocre homemaker. My brother. He does the grocery shopping and the dishes for her and stuff. Is that it? And cleans the house. Yeah, he doesn't make the bed. You're right about that. He never makes the bed. Yeah, pretty much. The cats are still alive. You're right. There are videos of them all the time. So you and Secret Boyfriend do art for work from home. Yes, more or less. Oh, Mabel's here. Hi. Um, uh, she Hi, asked Mabel. if we both. Is it Mabel Mabel? Yes. Hi, Mabel Mabel. Uh, Sasha, I need you to come back and get a tattoo from her. Okay, that's fine. Or you could come to LA and get a tattoo from her when she... I think she's going to come do a stint at the LA office. Um, I mean, I don't make my bed, but I do have all the sheets and blankets. Yeah. Scrolling through TikTok on my lunch and I just stopping by to say hi. That's Mabel. Um, hi, Mabel. Um, so... I don't remember what I was talking about before that, but no, he doesn't know how to make his bed. Your brother? Yeah. It's not that he doesn't have to, but he's choosing not to. You think and so? I support him in this one. You support him? Yeah. Really? Not making his bed? Babe, we make the bed every day. Well, I do that because I love you. 
Oh, thanks. Oh yeah, Brittany wanted so so Brittany's question was, do do you both work from home doing art? And I said yes. Yes. <laughs> technically. Yes, technically. Yes. We do. I don't have any tattoos, but I love looking at people's work. I have many tattoos, and I also love looking. Yeah, he's going to make a smoothie, so it's going to get noisy. One, two, three. Dance. Noise dance. to tell you while you were making a smoothie, most people in the chat are actually saying that they only make their bed because their partner wants them to or because or wants it to be done or that their partner just makes the bed. It, am I interpreting that correctly? Who makes the bed of their own volition? Who makes the bed because their partner? We make the bed together. I know, but well, you were I just saying you only do it because I want it to be done. Right? Well. It's the only reason I got into the hat that. Yeah, and now you do but it anyway? Now I do it anyway. I did it when you were gone. You did it while I was gone? Yeah. That's so cute. Guys, you made a habit. Whoever's the last one up makes the bed. We almost uh, exclusively get up at the same time, so we make the bed together. It's a pretty mixed bag, actually. Yeah? Yeah. Steffi said, when my kids are older, I'll make the bed. Right now, there's no point. Fair. That's fair. Thank you, Sydney. This was a birthday gift from my goddaughter. This is going to taste very unique, I think. Unique or good? I haven't tried it. It smells good. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Mmm. I mean... I think Joshua does it because the army got him used to it. That's fair. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, we'll try we that. each have our own sheet and blanket, so making the bed is a logistic nightmare. Whoa. How do you have your own sheet and blankets? Maybe they have one of those split mattresses. Oh. The 1950s. I don't think like that. I think the kind that are like to have different softnesses. Or it's like a sitcom in the 50s. Or it's like I Love Lucy, sure. Studies have found that making the bed can trap dust mites within the duvet cover and the bedding. How dare you? <laughs> Just wash them every once in a while. Once in a while? We wash our sheets pretty often. That's what I mean. Just wash them and that will fix that. Although, I will say, no split mattress, but I have a 50 pound weighted blanket. Bro, same, Emily. Emily, 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 Emily. You're you the have first. 180 pound weighted blanket. I do have a 180 pound weighted blanket. Um, <laughs> yeah okay Emily you're the first um, person that I've ever met that wants the weighted blanket as heavy as I want it so I also oh no Emily he was making a joke he's 180 pounds um, but I, I do Actually, 180, I don't think they're judging you honey <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't think they care how much you weigh no no I had to tell the truth okay He's actually 185 some days, 190, my goodness. Okay. Um, I don't know how much I weigh anymore because I threw my scale away. Later scale. It was causing me mental anguish. <laughs> so I got rid, of it. got rid of it. And now I just say, do I still fit in my pants? Okay. That's actually the healthy way to do it. Scales are not worth looking up. Amanda said, I'm totally judging his weight as I eat a cookie. 
Your weighted blanket sprung a leak, that's bad. I use my scale to weigh packages. I have a package scale for that and it doesn't go above 10 pounds, so it can't weigh me because I'm not a baby. Sometimes Sasha's weighted blankets for too. Oh no, gross, too yucky. No, good. You have a heated weighted blanket? Me too. Space heater. <laughs> okay, are we ready to read the next chapter? Who's ready to read? Let's go! <laughs> Brittany said, wait, am I on after dark? <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Brittany's actually a great artist, babe. She does, like, really, really cool actual, like, physical drawings. Oh, nice. She's very talented. I've seen some of her drawings and also she decorated her house for Halloween, but like drew the pumpkins and the stuff on the windows and like those kind of things. And when I saw it, I was like, is that a sticker? Or did you draw it? And she like drew it, but it like looks as good as the ones you buy at the store that are a sticker. Oh, that's amazing. It's amazing. I was very impressed. I was like, ah! That's what I did. I made that sound when I saw she it. She has those markers so you can like draw on with those. Yeah, but she's like really good. I've had those markers before. You could do that. Yeah, you, you could do that. You could do that. We should do that on the Joey Hot One Dust. Can we? The part we had no. <laughs> we did giant pumpkins. That's a good idea. Yeah, but you have to do the drawing. Or, or I'll or just write Happy Halloween. We should Probably do. too late for Halloween. Yeah. yeah. But we can do it for Christmas. We should do it for Christmas. And for, for Thanksgiving, we can do a giant turkey. So we'll do a pilgrim and Indian on that one. I don't think that's a good idea. Chasing each other. What? Babe, don't get us canceled. <laughs> chasing each other. Why would they chase each other? You know why. <laughs> Sasha, do you remember every detail about, how do you remember every detail about every person? I do remember every detail about everybody in our group, which is why, do you guys remember, I haven't started the series yet, but a lot of people asked for me to do a series of videos um, without any prompting, like everyone, someone who wants to be in it will volunteer, obviously, and I will, it's, it was called like the lore of whoever, like we did Sinny's, remember? And I will make a video telling everything that I know about a specific person in our group without any reminders. Um, and it's a lot of things, I remember, if y'all could just not out me for anything, thanks. Yeah, no, of course. Hi, Grace. You're not late. We haven't even started reading yet. We've just been chit-chatting about weighted blankets and how much I know about every person in the group and how they came to our group. Because people, see, this is the problem. When you have a spicy brain, everybody's spicy brain works a little differently. And I have an exceedingly good memory. So I legitimately do remember exactly how we came upon each person. Like I can tell you, if you guys want to know, like I didn't know about Arbitrary Canary for the longest time. And she had been on my lives a bunch of times and I was just like, oh, that's a funny name. And the time that I actually like grokked that she was in the live was Mina, the slime hive, commented on her username in one of my lives. And I was like, I also think it's a funny username, but I just hadn't pointed it out because I didn't want to like call her out. And then I was like, huh, that's so cool. And literally the day after that happened, her video started showing up on my page. And I didn't realize that she had not only been purchasing slime for me, but was in my Patreon. And I like had this whole like, tr like, rolling series of events and you know so like i can literally tell you how everybody came into the group i just aggressively active in your lives to make you love me <laughs> very funny um i don't think i share a lot for people to really know me yeah but i remember like things that people say in the lives or like in their messages to me so that i can remember stuff about them Ooh, especially since you know something that nobody else like okay well becca i wouldn't say uh, becca Come on, you really think that I'm gonna like literally like tell a family secret on live? Come on. The only family secrets that I tell are that my brother doesn't know how to make his bed. It's not a secret, he posts videos on Instagram. The reason we're able to talk about his lack of top sheet is that he's always showing it off. It's not a secret. You know, it is a secret that my mother doesn't know how to respond to text messages. She's still responding in that same thread. Like I can see them coming down right now. And, uh, oh, it's not the top sheet. Is it the bottom sheet that he doesn't have? Oops. It's true, Becca. 
My mom does text quite a lot. My mom, for her age, is, uh, oh, you're talking like, for her age, my mom is um, really pretty tech savvy, I have to say. Well, thank you for coming back despite the slime crime ring. That's actually a great name for it. My dad doesn't understand cell phones. Um, listen, Becca, that's unfair. That's cheating, Becca. You are cheating and you know it. Too dark, too twisty. Um, sorry, we're reading The Land of Stories book four. I'm so sorry. I need to, um, the way I was quietly here until joining Patreon, y'all were like, who is this be? But I knew who you were, right? Because I knew that you had gotten slimes for the kids before, remember? Because we always called them, I know you don't, it's not actually Cabbage Patch Kids. I know it's like a play on your last name, but I say Cabbage Patch Kids, so I don't actually say your last name publicly. So I just say Cabbage Patch Kids, even though that's not really what it is. Uh, my dad texts. <laughs> uh, okay, listen, Becca. My dad doesn't text either. <sighs> you have a secret, Grace? Tell me. All right, let's read chapter six. It's called The Bad Fairy. You guys, this chair is the best. It rocks in all directions. Yeah, wow. That's why we got it. We got this chair specifically because it's a rocker, glider, slider, twisty. Yeah, it's a good chair. And it's blue. And it's blue. So colorful. I used to be a spammer, kind of. I just used to ask my question over multiple times in a live. That's not my secret, Grace. I can see you. But Grace, we accepted you lovingly. I'm like, Dad, I know it's you. I know it's so funny when parents, my mom, um, it is a spicy brain dance. My mom used to do that. She's, she's got, I, I've man, managed to like teach her how to use text messages over the last like 15 years, but she used to sign them mom. She used to be like, hi, Sasha, it's mom. I was like, no, I know. I can, I can see the phone number. It's cute. It's so cute, but she's really good now. Now she doesn't do that. Actually, after I worked her out of signing her name, her next thing that she got into was Bitmoji. Do you guys remember when Bitmoji was a thing? I, it's still kind of a thing because iPhone owns it now and uses it, but it was its own app before. And my mother was very excited when Bitmoji became a thing. So she would start to send a Bitmoji for literally anything, anytime. So like, if it was, she still does it. it it's like a thing where you can make a thing that looks like you as an emoji, but you can like dress it up for different circumstances. What? My mom did that the other day. Your mom did that the other day as well. And so my mom, like, it's my goddaughter's birthday last week, and I sent a group message to our entire family because my goddaughter doesn't have her own phone number. So I sent it to, like, her mom, her grandmother, whatever, and said, hey, pass on to Natasha that, you know, I said, happy birthday, I love you, I'm so glad you were born, blah, 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 all that stuff. And my mom was on the chat, and my mom sent a bitmoji of herself throwing confetti in the air and saying happy birthday because that's what this woman does. Um, and she also like got into this habit where she would just respond to any questions with just emojis and nothing else, just emojis, <laughs> right? And, but, but they weren't ones that made any sense for the question. So for example, I would ask her a question about like her business that I was helping her with. I'd be like, do you have X, Y, Z? And she would respond with a chicken emoji. And I was like, <laughs> Your mom's hilarious. cool, can you answer the question? We're trying to get work done here. And then she would respond with a Christmas tree. And I was like, it's July. I need you to focus. Like, I was like, what is happening right now? This woman is insane. So if you look at her contact in my phone, it says mom, chicken, puppy, Christmas tree. And people are always like, why do you have these emojis after your mom's name? Yeah, now she sends roses on TikTok. My dad's signature is the thumbs up emoji. That makes sense. I feel like that's a classic dad move. I don't have a dad, but if I did, I imagine that he would thumbs up me a lot. Does your dad thumbs up a lot? Uh, not really, actually. Mm. Yeah. The emoji came out with wheelchair emojis in my Facebook feed. Was what? Yeah, I believe that. That was. But that's probably pretty exciting. I mean, yeah, that's fair, Becca. Mine didn't even bother doing that. For a long time, my dad didn't use emoticons. He just <laughs> he would just do bracket G bracket. That's funny. That's funny. Uh. That's amazing. All right, let's read this because I do have to get to work since today is the Patreon restock, so I really have to like do counts and stuff. But um, let's read about bad fairies, you guys. Here we go. Oh, all right, we're back with Connor. Connor and his friends returned to Dead Man's Creek much sooner than any of them would have liked. 
he and Jack rummaged around through piles of destroyed witch's brew while Red and Goldilocks searched the woods nearby. Porridge and her son, Oats, who was nearly the size of his mother now, helped Connor and Jack by kicking over large pieces of the wrecked tavern. In case anyone doesn't know, Porridge is Goldilocks's horse. So Oats is her coal. <laughs> Candy corn cereal stock, zero. Literally, there's like 75. I'm not kidding, there's a ton. I know there's not that many slimes in this restock, like type-wise, but there's a lot of each one. So it's like, you know, 10 slimes, but like almost 100 of each, you know? Well, not 100, because there's not 1,000 slimes, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway. Yeah, I only see sticks, Jack said. Are we looking for anything in particular? Anything, Connor said desperately. Anything that could lead us to the masked man. Alex isn't going to stop looking for him because the fairy council forbade her to, so she'll be even more determined to prove herself now. we got to get him before she does. I'm afraid of what she might do if she finds him. Connor tried to tell himself that he had done everything he could to help his sister, but he knew that wasn't true. If he'd been honest with her from the beginning about her obsession with the masked man, perhaps they wouldn't be in this predicament. Now, on top of being overwhelmed, Alex was all alone and probably thought the entire world was against her, including her brother. Connor just wanted to find her so that he could help her rebuild everything that she'd lost. But even if they found her, he wouldn't know where to start. It's such a shame, Fred said, shaking her head as she searched the ground. The people you depend on and trust are always the ones to disappoint you the most. Goldilocks nodded her head. I agree. I can't believe what the fairy council did to Alex, especially after all she's done for the kingdoms. Who cares if the masked man is her father or not? You'd think that they'd learn to trust her instincts by now. Red glanced at her awkwardly. The fairy council? I was talking about the caterers for my wedding. They canceled on it this morning. Do you know how difficult it will be to find someone to cook for 500 people with two days notice? Goldilocks found Red more annoying than ever when she talked about her wedding. The last thing Red needed was more entitlement. Well, I'm glad that Jack and I had a small wedding then, Goldilocks said. No fight or fuss, just simple and quick. Red rolled her eyes. Yeah, I suppose it was easy sending invitations since your guest list and the most wanted list were one and the same. Unfortunately, when you're as respected as Charlie and I are, you have no choice but to throw an extravagant but elegant celebration. Our people are depending on a spectacular wedding. It teaches them how to dream. Goldilocks took a deep breath, fighting the temptation to throw something at her. Yeah, if you still have wedding plans to make, then why are you here? Goldilocks asked. Um, I don't like planning anything without Charlie, and he's busy with a bunch of king nonsense today. Apparently, the citizens are very anxious about how, what he's going to rename the kingdom now that he's on the throne. Is he going to name it after himself like you and little Bo did? Goldilocks asked. No, Red said, disappointed to report. He's determined to give the kingdom a name that it can keep beyond his reign. I believe he settled on the center kingdom. It's boring if you ask me, but I suppose it's the thing that the kingdom will save a fortune on, not constantly reprinting maps and signs. Red suddenly stopped in her tracks and pressed her finger to her lips. <gasps> Goldilocks was very familiar with this pose. Red did it every time she was about to ask a favor. I almost forgot, Red said. I have something that I wanted to ask you, Goldie. Oh no, Goldilocks sighed. Since Alex will still most likely be in hiding at the time of the wedding, will you please be my matron of honor? Red asked excitedly. Oh, please say yes. I can't think of anyone else I'd be more willing to go through this with. We're like sisters, the kind of sisters who have almost killed each other at one point in time. But Goldilocks stared at her blankly for a few moments and then burst into tears. Red became teary-eyed at the sight and threw her arms around her. I don't know you would be so touched, Red said. I'm not, Goldilocks said and wiped her eyes on Red's sleeve. That sounds awful, but I can't think of a reason to say no. And everything seems so much worse when you're pregnant. Red quickly dropped the embrace and joined the boys. I'm sorry, Red. That, that was rude of me. Of course I can be your matron of honor, Goldilocks apologized. I, I can't filter a word that I say because, like, hormones. Their search for clues leading to the masked man continued for a couple more hours until Connor's frustration got the best of him. He grunted loudly and began kicking the debris all around him. This is pointless, he yelled. There's nothing here. We've got to look somewhere else. Uh, this is the only location that we've seen the masked man in five months, Jack said. Where else can we search? 
Connor didn't have an answer. He walked down to the creek and sat on a boulder as he thought it over. He looked into the sky for clarity, but instead he found a distraction. What he saw was very strange and he rubbed his eyes to make sure it wasn't a hallucination. Um, guys, Connor said to the others, what is that? A book was flying through the air and it appeared to be flying toward him. As the book flew closer, Connor saw three tiny objects hovering above it. One purple, one green, and one orange. Each had a pair of colorful wings. Are those insects? No, oh, sorry, wrong voice. Are those insects? I did not bring any repellent, Red said. No, they're fairies, Goldilocks said. Okay, one of the fairies yelled. We can't hold it any longer. The book slipped from their tiny grip and smacked Connor right in the face. He, tem he temporarily lost his sight in one of his eyes, but then his vision returned and he saw three fairies standing on a boulder beside him. They were sweating profusely and out of breath. So sorry, Connor, one of the fairies said. We've carried that all the way from the fairy kingdom. Connor instantly recognized her, although he hadn't seen her in years. Trix, is that you? He asked. The fairy had dark hair and blue wings and wore a dress made of purple leaves. She smiled up at him and batted her big eyes, so pleased that he remembered her name. Hey, Connor, Trix said. We've been looking everywhere for you. These are my friends, Merkel and Noodle. She gestured to the other fairies and they waved at him. Noodle was plump for her size and her stomach stuck out of her orange dress. Merkel was as thin as a pencil and glanced around nervously as she vigorously rubbed her hands together. We um, shouldn't have done this, Merkel said. We're gonna get in so much trouble. Merkel, calm down before you catch your hands on fire, Noodle said. No one knows we're here. What um, are you doing here, Connor asked. Trix flew up to his face so that she could look him in the eye. We know about your sister. Trix, the entire world knows about her, Connor said. Overnight, she went from the fairy godmother to most wanted person alive. It's pretty newsworthy. No, I mean, we were there last night at the fairy council meeting, Trix said. We saw everything. We were sitting in the windowsill that no one ever notices, Noodle said with a wink. We never miss a fairy council meeting. It gives us something to talk about with the other fairies. We know all about the masked man, and we think that Alex is right to have been worried about him. Uh, we shouldn't have been there, Merkel said and covered her face in shame. And most of the fairies we've talked to are on her side, Trix said. We think it's the council who blew things out of proportion. Connor was glad his sister had support from someone. Yeah, uh, I appreciate that, Trix, but it's very common. The council will banish us from the fairy kingdom if they find out, oh, sorry. The, 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 the council will bear, banish us from the fairy kingdom if they find out what we've we stolen, Merkel suddenly exclaimed. For bad fairies, very bad fairies. The poor thing looked as if she was about to have a heart attack. Okay, pause, Connor said. What did you guys steal? Trix and Noodle eyed each other mischievously. <laughs> Remember that time that you and your sister saved me from banishment? Trix said, well, it's been three years, but I've always planned on returning the favor. So I wanted to help your sister prove herself and Noodle and Markle agreed to assist me. B biggest regret of my life, Merkel said. Yeah, at the council meeting, your sister mentioned that the masked man stole a potion from the late fairy godmother, one he claimed was very powerful, Trix said. The fairy council isn't worried about it, but if Alex is concerned, then we're concerned. So, we did a little snooping around the fairy palace on her behalf, and we found out she was right, Noodle said. The late fairy godmother did invent a potion that was very powerful, and we think it's the one the masked man stole. Given the sources, Connor didn't want to get his hopes up, but what they were telling him was very intriguing. Yeah, okay, how do you know this? Showing the book already. I can't stand the anticipation, Merkel yelled. Her eyes almost bulged out of their sockets. Trix and Noodle each grabbed a corner of the book that they had transported and dropped it onto Connor's lap. He opened it and flipped through the pages. It was filled with entries and sketches and diagrams. It was a log of experiments. At first, Connor assumed that the neat and feminine handwriting belonged to a scientist, but it looked very familiar. It was the same handwriting that Connor had seen on birthday cards and letters. Wait a second, this is my grandmother's, Connor said. I've never seen it before. Yeah, we found it tucked away in her former chambers at the palace, Trix said. She reported all of the ingredients of the spells and potions she created, Trix said. 
and we stole it. Merkel gasped. She'd never been so ashamed. Yeah, we stole it, Noodle said with a smile. She was tickled by their naughtiness. And we think the last entry is the potion the masked man stole, Trix said. It's very powerful, much more powerful than any other potion that she created. Jack, Goldilocks, and Red gathered closer to Connor and the fairies, anxious to hear it for themselves. Even Porridge and Oats seemed interested by what the fairies had discovered. I think this is worth taking a look at, Jack said. Yeah, I agree. Listen to the insects, Connor, Red said. The fairies fluttered with so much excitement that they buzzed like bees. Just read the last few pages, the part about the portal potion, Trix instructed. Connor turned to the last entry of his grandmother's book and read about the creation. The portal potion. Success! After weeks and weeks of trying, I've finally discovered the correct ingredients for the potion I'd hoped to create for my son. With just a few drops, the potion turns any written work into a portal into the world it describes. Even with my ability to create portals and to and from the other world, I never thought this would be possible. To create a substance that allows me passage to any world that I wish, my son will get to see the places and meet the characters that he spent his whole childhood dreaming about. And, best of all, I'll get to watch his happiness soar as it happens. The ingredients are much simpler than I imagined, but difficult to obtain. Their purposes are more metaphysical than practical, so it took some imagination to get the concoction right. The first requirement is a branch from the oldest tree in the woods. To bring the pages to life, I figured the potion would need the very thing that brought the paper to life in the first place. What else has more life in it than an ancient tree? The second ingredient is a feather from the finest pheasant in the sky. This will guarantee that your potion has no limits like a bird in flight. It will ensure that you can travel to lands far and wide beyond your imagination. I wish I had a secret boyfriend to wash my dishes. Yes. He is do he's cleaning the stove. The third component is liquefied lock and key that belong to a true love. Just as this person unlocked your heart to a life of love, it will open the door of the literary dimension that your heart desires to experience. The fourth ingredient is two weeks of moonlight. Just as the moon causes waves in the ocean, the moonlight will stir your potion to life. Last but most important, give the potion a spark of magic to activate all the ingredients. Send it a beam of joy straight from your heart. The potion does not work on any biographies or history books. It purely works on works that have been imagined. Now, I must warn about the dangers of entering a fictional world. Number one, time only exists as long as the story continues. Be sure to leave the book before the story ends or you may disappear as the story concludes. Number two, each world is made of only what the author describes. Do not expect the characters to have any knowledge of our world or the other world. Number three, beware of the story's villains. Unlike people in our world or the other world, most literary villains are created to be heartless and stripped of all morals. So do not expect any mercy should you cross paths with one. Number four, the book you choose to enter will act as your entrance and exit. Be certain that nothing happens to it as it is your only way out. Hey, Mary. The fairy godmother had drawn an illustration with a small vial at the end of the entry. It looked exactly like the bottle that Alex had seen the masked man steal and exactly like the bottle that Connor had seen him holding on the roof of the witch's brew. Holy smokes, Connor said. His head was spinning so fast. He felt like the ground was moving. That's how he survived the fall when he made Alex and the tavern float. He activated the small book with the potion and must have gone inside it before he hit the ground. The situation was becoming clearer, but also more confusing all at once. Was it possible that Alex has been right this entire time? Your grandmother made the potion for her son? Your father? Goldilocks said. When the masked man stole it, he told Alex he was taking something that was owed to him. Connor nodded. 
I almost hate to say it, but Alex's story is starting to make sense, he said, although he still wasn't ready to believe that it was possible. The masked man told the witches that he needed their help finding something, and once he did, he could recruit an army beyond their wildest dreams, Jack recalled. He said it was a collection of sorts, so I suppose to be with the potion, but the late fairy godmother had already gotten rid of it. He must have been talking about a collection of books, Connor said. We've got to find Alex and fill her in on this. She might know which books he's talking about. They all looked at one another, more determined to find her than ever. However, Red did not reciprocate their excitement. She had zoned out of their conversation and was staring peculiarly at the creek. Red, what's wrong? Jack asked. Oh, nothing. I'm fine, she said. She never looked up. But I swear, I just saw the creek's current change directions. Red let out a high-pitched squeal. <gasps> she covered her mouth with one hand and pointed down the creek with the other. Two wooden caskets eerily floated from the other part of the dwarf forest. Red and the others stared at them in complete silence until the caskets gradually washed ashore nearby. What are those doing in the creek? Trick at, Trix asked. She and her fairy friends had never seen such a macabre sight. Well, they don't call it Dead Man's Creek for nothing, Jack said. You don't think there are bodies inside those, do you? Red peeped. Goldilocks withdrew her sword. There's only one way to find out. Without any hesitation, Goldilocks approached the caskets and sliced off the latches. She opened them and had to cover her mouth from the smell. Oh, <coughs> yep, there's bodies inside, all right, she said. Come take a look. Oh, God, I've never seen corpses like these before. <laughs> no, thank you, Red was quick to say. I'll take your word for it. Connor and Jack went to have a look for themselves. Each casket contained the body of an elderly person. They were so pale and wrinkled that they looked like white raisins. They were also so shriveled their gender couldn't be identified. It was as if the bodies had been completely drained of life. The fairies hovered over Jack's shoulder, too scared to look, but too curious not to. Oh no, Merkel cried. This is an omen. It's a b -b -b bad omen, I tell you. It was so ghoulish that Connor thought the paranoid fairy might be right. Yeah, he said, but uh, an omen of what? Dun, dun, dun! An omen of what? It's a great question. I don't know the answer, but an omen of what? All right, friends, I gotta bounce because we got a busy, busy, busy day. I will be on later for restock and I will see you all then. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. See you guys later. Bye friends.